Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make Max and Ruby's house from the show Max and Ruby. So just before we start building everybody, here are all of the materials that we will need to make Max and Ruby's house. Please do make sure that you have access to all those materials and enough of them as well. The amount of space required to make the house is a 28 by 39 block area as represented by the white concrete grid on the ground, which you are more than welcome to make if you do feel as though it will help you out. Now that we have all of that stuff, we can get started. So I'm going to begin by coming to the very front right hand corner of our grid and I'm going to count left of this corner one, two, three, four, five, six, and then inwards one, two. This is where I'm going to start off the build. Begin by placing a single white concrete on the ground. Then place three yellow concrete going left. One, two, three. Then place four red terracotta going left. One, two, three, four. Extend the fourth red terracotta upwards by four. One, two, three, four. Extend right, up, right, and then up by ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I then want you to go right, and we're going to connect down. Or in my case, I'm actually going to connect up because I find it much easier to build this way. So we can just join it all together like that. Now that we have created that, we're going to continue going left of the chimney, that's what that is, and we're going to extend left by seven using yellow concrete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want you to place a white concrete on the end, and we're going to extend the white concrete backwards by 11 rows using your yellow concrete. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Stick a white concrete on the end, Extend your yellow concrete all the way across the back of the build, line it up with the front of the build, stick a white concrete on the end, and then place a row of yellow concrete extending forwards to join back to the front of the build. The end result should be this rectangular shape made out of yellow, red, and a little bit of white concrete in the corners. Now, once you have achieved this effect, what we are then going to do is we're going to take the chimney area, which is, it kind of looks like one of those foam fingers that you might see at like a sporting event, and we're going to place a layer of red terracotta directly in front of this. So, we're going to make it a little bit more 3D than it was already, and we just want to stick just an entire layer you can very haphazardly just place your red terracotta in from. We then want to stick oak fence going all the way around the top of it, just like this, and that will be our chimney. Now, that isn't the only thing that we have to do. We have to apply a couple of windows. So we're going to come all the way over towards the left-hand side here, and we're going to take the most leftist of yellow concretes on the front of the build, and we're going to place one on top. We're then going to place two glass pane going right, white concrete, two glass pane. I want you to increase the size of all of these. So on top of the glass and on top of the white concrete, I want you to place the same. On the right side of the window pane, we are going to place three yellow concrete, one, two, and three. We're then going to place two glass pane on top of this, and we're going to extend them each right. This requires a little bit of dexterity. There we go. I'm actually surprised that I managed to do that with relative ease. Now that we have done this, what I'm going to recommend that you do is take the white concrete on the left side of the build and also the right and raise it up by three. So one, two, and three. And then on the other side here as well, of course, one, two, three. Uh, what we then want to do is we want to take the white concrete rows that we've just made and we want to place rows of yellow extending backwards. These rows of yellow are going to be as high as the rows of white. The end of these also of course want to be white concrete which will be raised up an equal height to the yellow and will help us better frame the back of the build. We're not quite done however because we do want to just whip around to the front of the build as I think about it and we want to add some yellow concrete around the windows. We want to do this at the bottom window and also the top window as well. You're quite safe to do that do so in both cases and we want to place quartz slab along the lower half of the large window at the bottom and the top half of the large window at the bottom as well. We also want to place quartz slabs above and below the small window that is on the front of the build too. 
What we then want to do is we want to extend all the way over towards the back of the build here. And we are going to make some more windows. So on the back of the build, we are going to place a window. On the left side here, we want to begin by placing a yellow concrete. And then right of this, we want to place two glass pane, white concrete, two glass pane. We then want to increase the size of all of the glass and the white concrete that we just placed. And then we want to simply just place a yellow concrete frame around the window. And then that will allow us to do the exact same thing using quartz slabs that we did earlier. So the quartz slabs will be below and above the window in the same manner that is on the front. And that will give us this very strange outline. Now unfortunately we have to frame the roof so that we are able to progress with the actual house. So it's, it's actually a lot easier to do this starting on the front of the build than it is on the back of the build. So, so on the front of the build here where we're going to begin the roof simply because it's easier. We're going to place a green concrete extending from the top front left hand corner of the build. We then want to extend that green concrete forwards and then upwards. We then want to extend that green concrete right and up, right and up continually until eventually it will hit the chimney. It should hit the chimney in such a position that it doesn't quite reach the top, but it's rather close. So yeah, perfect. It wants to be simply one row away from the top exactly like this. Now, the thing about this is we then want to come to the opposite side of the roof here and we are going to place green concrete extending backwards from every single one of the green concretes that we've placed and we're actually going to have to do this twice. So you want to place two rows of green concrete behind until the green concrete extends backwards further than the back part of the chimney like this. Perfect. So what we're then going to do is we are going to begin building on the right side of the build now. So we're on the bottom from right hand corner of the build. And this is different. We want to place a green concrete. Again, right of the top from right hand corner of the build. We then want to extend the green concrete forwards and then up. And here's where things differ. We want to go left, up, two. Left, up, two. Left, up, two left up two now we're going to come to the reverse of this we're going to extend all of the green concretes backwards like so we want to make sure that the green concretes will then of course overhang the back of the chimney by one row and then that way we will be able to connect them together so we're going to extend this right up two and then we're just going to go right and then up one. So now you can see how this roof works. It's a very strange shape, very, very strange. And in making that, that will allow us to then, on the front of the build, fill in the rest of the walls. So you can see that there is a little bit of a method to the madness. Now we have pretty much figured out what the shape of the front of the build is by using the roof to define it and that will also do the same for the back of the build so we simply just want to fill in all of these gaps that we have now created using yellow concrete and we've also established the shape of the roof which is rather difficult i think so from the front of the build it looks very much like this which i think looks pretty good um, it's also worth noting that the entrance to the house is going to be here, uh, just in between this row of three yellow concrete, one row off the ground. Um, we'll do that a little bit later on though. We'll extinguish these materials that we've been using and then we'll come back. Okay, so now that we have pretty much figured out the majority of the front of the house, what we are now going to do is extend the roof backwards and we are going to add some details towards the back of the house. The way that I would recommend extending the roof backwards is by taking the bottom blocks of the left and right sides of the roof, extend them backwards like this, make sure that they overhang the back of the build, and then I would recommend simply copying the exact same shape that we have on the front of the build onto the back of the build just like this. And once we have established that exact same shape like so, 
what we will then be able to do, and by the way, I much prefer building upwards and down, so that's why I'm dipping back down here. So, um, if you build it like this, if you establish the frame shape on the back of the build, it will save you a little bit of waste in placing blocks. So, there we go, that's perfect, just like that. It will save a little bit of waste in placing blocks because you won't have to place the inside blocks. So, you only have to place the green concrete blocks on the outer part of the roof. You don't have to place the connecting internal blocks as we have done a little bit here so it saves a little bit of time i think that it's a little bit easier i also think it's a little bit more pleasant um just simply like joining left to right rather than extending like the roof like just front to back and then front to back then front to back over and over again but whatever method you want to use as long as the roof is symmetrical meaning it's the same on the front as it is the back then uh, you won't run into any problems whatsoever and we are rapidly coming to a close on the details associated with the house there's quite a few things that we have to do with the garden but the house is um actually we we are really running out of things that we have to do which is great so uh once we've sealed up the roof we can work on some details on the back we'll put some finishing touches to the house and uh, and then we can move on to the garden so let's just seal up the roof and then that's perfect as you can see exact same roof as we have on the back as we do the front so the easiest way to do this next part is i think for us to simply seal up the entire back of the house using yellow concrete there's only about five or so blocks that we will have to destroy so um it, it's probably better that we simply just have a nice blank canvas of yellow concrete to work with and then we can simply knock out a few blocks and it will just make things easier so we're just about at the top here with the yellow concrete. We have almost filled it all in. Perfect. So, there we go. That's what we should have so far. There is a small window at the top of the build. The small window is basically two rows in width that is joined together diagonally with these two diagonal parts of the roof. We then drop the window down a row so that we have a 2 by 2 square of glass just like this towards the top of the building. On the back of the house as well, there is a porch. The porch is very, very simple in design. If you start from the bottom right-hand corner of the build and place rows of one, two, three oak planks extending from the back corner of the house, and then a row of one, two, three, four, five oak stairs extending across, and then if you join a row of oak planks extending from the house to the stairs, and then fill the center of this in using oak planks, then you will have made yourself a porch. We also want to have a door. There's going to be a door placed from the house onto the porch. It's going to be set simply two rows in from the porch on the left. We're going to place rows of one, two, three oak fence on the two outer corners of the oak plank. So, just like this. What we are then going to do is we are just going to grab a few new materials. Now, we might need some of the old ones. I'm sure that we will. But for now, brick slabs, oak leaves, spruce door, white wall, red wall, cobblestone, birch wood stairs, birch wood slab, and birch door. We certainly will need some of the old materials. But we want to use a spruce door to, well, put a door on the back door. And we want to place alternating rows of red wool and white wool extending from the top of the porch backwards this is exactly what the porch looks like it's got like a nice colorful overhang just like this if you want to make it look a little bit better you'll destroy this green concrete here and replace it using red wool and it looks ever so slightly better from underneath now we're going to come to the front of the build once more and we're going to place spru a spruce door where the entrance is we're going to use bricks so we're going to use a span of three bricks and then a set of slabs in front and then that will lead us from the basically just it will just lead us up to the door for to the front entrance that's pretty much all that is it's, it's to highlight the door um we're going to place some oak leaves around the front window just like this i know that this covers up the window sill a little bit but that is how it is and that is pretty much the front of the house, ladies and gentlemen. Feel free if you want to to add a little bit of a pathway, but um, 
it I haven't really designed it in such a way that we have all of the details like I've not added the tree and stuff to the front of the garden I've kept it a little bit simple kind of like this but you could add say like the uh, the bin and the signpost and the post box and uh, the tree and stuff if you did want to but I think that this is actually quite nice just as it is not to over complicate it as we come towards the back of the build here I think that it is probably time for us to Oh, I, it seems as though that somehow we have managed to miss a quartz slab. So a quartz slab's just been placed there, just up above the window. So, so the next thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to get rid of that quartz slab there, and I'm going to grab the oakwood planks back out. We're going to grab the oakwood planks and come towards the back right-hand corner of the boundaries that we placed earlier. We're going to extend inwards diagonally and place an oak plank. We're then going to extend that plank forwards by four. One, two, three, four. We're then going to extend that plank left by one. Place a birch door and then place two oak planks on the end. Extend the oak planks backwards and join together. We want to make the oak planks three rows high in total. So we want to raise them all up by two rows. That will give us three rows going all the way around. This is basically a shed. On the front and back of the shed, we're going to make a small pyramid shape using oak planks. So we'll extend up the middle three blocks and then the center. What we're then going to do is place birch stairs on the sides of the shed as to make a roof. So the birch stairs basically going to extend forwards and backwards from the top of the shed coming down and basically all the, all the way up again. So just like this. Uh, we're then going to place birchwood slabs across the top of the shed here And then we're going to place birchwood stairs hanging off the front of the shed They're also going to hang off the back of the shed as well And we're going to have upside down birchwood stairs underneath the overhanging birchwood stairs like this And it's just going to frame the roof of the shed rather nicely We're going to do the exact same thing on the uh, back of course as well Like this And then we will be able to add a little bit of detail and uh, we'll be able to set uh, some boundaries for the house. So now that the roof has been completely done like this, um, what we should probably do is, and again, we're, go we're going to be getting materials and chucking them away quite a few times throughout this tutorial, but we're going to grab the quartz slabs and we're going to grab the birch fence gate and we actually could do with birch, uh, with block of quartz as well. So, I want you to place a block of quartz in front of the shed on the left and right side like this. So, they're kind of extending diagonally out in front of the shed. Um, the left block of quartz is going to extend all the way left towards the boundary. And then it's going to extend all the way forwards again towards the boundary. Um, the block of quartz is actually going to connect to the yellow concrete that we first placed extending backwards from the white concrete like this on the front of the house. In addition to that, we want to have the same effect here on the right side of the build. So we'll take the first yellow concrete here, we'll extend it outwards using the block of quartz, and then we'll extend it back like this. We're also going to place quartz slabs on top of all of the quartz, just like this. So, on top of all of the quartz slab, uh, all of the quartz blocks, we want to place quartz slabs. That makes it so that you can't jump over the fence, and it just makes it look a little bit better as well. Now, the reason that we have the birch fence gates is because we want to place them in two different places. So, the first place that we want to place is pretty much, can you see there, if we look from the back wall towards the house, we, we're kind of aiming for the space in between the window and the porch. That's where one of the fence gates wants to go, the two fence gates doubled together. On the front of the build, we basically want to leave a gap of one from the house and then we're just going to have again another just like birch fence gate so that you can access the back garden readily if you want to we now want to place rows of cobblestone um kind of basically it 
sort of snaking towards the back gate of the house, kind of like this. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly placed in any way, shape, or form. It just slowly wants to sort of make its way towards where the fence gates are like so. And as long as you've got a cobblestone path, then you're adhering quite nicely to the... Uh, to the actual house. So, uh, just as it kind of just uh, slivers over from the back porch towards the uh, fence gate, kind of like in this sort of manner like this, then you can't go too far wrong. Um, we also want to use cobblestone to form a pathway from the shed towards the rest of the garden because it's it's actually fenced off a little bit. So we're going to place a row of, let's say like one, two, three, four, five, something like that, a double row of five cobblestone. And then we want to slowly extend the cobblestone outwards a little bit. So again, something like this, as long as it's sort of gently uh, slivers its way towards uh, the central point of the garden, kind of like this, then um, you can't really go too far wrong. We're not doing anything with the shed, by the way. We're just kind of like leaving it as is. So something like this will look just fine, really. So what are we going to do next? So we're going to use birch slabs. We'll need the wooden hoe, carrots, flower pot. We'll also need an oak fence. We also need the weighted pressure plate, oddly enough. We do also need the oakwood slabs, which I accidentally grabbed. We need the uh, sand as well. And that will actually do for now, I think. So, um, what are we going to do here? Uh, I want to hoe this area between the path and the shed and the fence. And I'm just going to place carrots in here. I think for obvious reasons. So, I'm just going to place some carrots in here. On the side of this, I'm going to use birch slabs to kind of create a little bit of a boundary, and I'm going to place some flower pots on the side here as well, just as it is in the show. Um, we have to create a garden, uh, we have to create kind of like a, a vegetable patch area that sort of extends from the other side of this path and somewhat leads to the front of the build, kind of like this. So this is all going to be carrots. Feel free to diversify um, what you use. But basically, we, we it, it basically acts like kind of like a path. I've actually done a little bit wrong there. Uh, I've actually overshot it, but it's okay. It will go back to normal. So we want to basically plant a load of carrots or whatever it is you may want to plant. And it's going to frame the pathway that we have between the front like fence gate area here and towards the the back of the uh, the back of the build so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense so we want to have a double path that kind of leads from that side gate there to and um, it wants to basically just wrap around the house and then just to the right of all of this we're going to have the vegetable pack so once um, once the grass is kind of like recovered from being hoed as it is slowly doing you'll be able to see like this all just wants to be grass I can actually help it along a little bit um, I'll just grab some actual proper grass and um, yeah it's something like this as long as it's like kind of like a double wide space like so then it just slowly curves around there and then that kind of uh, gives us a nice little guide for um, how to how to do the uh, the rest of the little vegetable patch here because it is quite a sizable patch so here and here and all of these carrots will steadily grow. We don't have to bow meal them, although you can if you're a little bit impatient, but they should steadily grow anyway, I think. So um, we'll leave that. That's pretty good, I think, so far. What we're then going to do is we're going to place a... It's basically a birdbath of sorts. Um, just kind of like... On the second part of the path here, just probably about to the right of it, just one row away, we're going to have the oak fence and then the heavy weighted pressure plate on top, and that's just acting as a bird bath. Um, to the left side here, we want to maintain a few rows distance from the path. We want to dig a 2x2 two two square into the ground, and we want to place sand in it. We're then going to place oak wood slabs all the way around it, and then that is going to be a sand pit. So that is pretty much all that is right there. Um, there also wants to be a tree, and the tree actually serves um, a, a couple of functions. Number one, it is an apple tree, so we're going to be needing oak wood and red. You can either use red wool for the apples, or you can use terracotta. Um, I think I'm going to use red wool because it's a bit more vibrant. I'm also going to need oak fence, and I'm going to use spruce trapdoor because it actually has a swing on it. 
So, y you can grow a tree, that's also a possibility, or you can manufacture one. So it's, it's up to you how you want to do this. So I'm going to actually make one and I'm going to use the oak wood that we have. And towards the back left hand corner really of the build, I'm just going to place a row of about five. Let's say one, two, three, four, five oak leaves here. Or oak wood. And then I'm going to place oak leaves around the top. I'm probably going to place about two rows or two layers of oak leaves all the way around the top of the build just like this. I'm going to place oak fence extending down. So, um, the way that we want to place the oak fence is um, towards the edge here, we're going to place a row of one, two, three oak fence extending down, one, two, three, cut like this. There has to be a gap between them. And then we want to place spruce trap doors. So, uh, they actually want to be directly underneath um, where we have the oak fence hanging down so that will just look like a little seat that you can swing on like so and then we're just going to build up the oak leaves and we're, we're going to try and make it look rather natural um, we're not going to spend an insane amount of time on it but you know we, ju we just want to make the tree look uh, rather natural so uh, if you kind of just randomly place some blocks kind of around it it can even look a little bit squarish it doesn't really matter it's uh, it's only a tree and um you know, something like that should actually look quite good. You want to place some apples in it as well. So that's going to be if you either place red wool just directly on the outside of the leaves or if you integrate them a little bit into the actual leaves as well, just like that, then you can go either way. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, as a matter of fact, the only thing that we're going to have to do from this point onwards, the only thing that this house is lacking, is a load of flowers. So, I purposely didn't grab any flowers because we actually need a, a, a variety of them. So, um, I'm going to grab all of these flowers, maybe even some bigger ones as well, like the rose bushes. And there is a huge collection of flowers, like there's a, a big giant flower bed just basically just left of where we were just building and you're going to want to just randomize it a little bit and you're going to want to place just a load of flowers so um, if you kind of just use a method of just slowly scrolling through or quickly scrolling through all of uh, all of your uh, flowers that you've kind of just like picked out and then you can just prune them a little bit just to make it so that they don't all look um, the same too much and as long as you've just got like a nice colorful flower bed um, that's that's all you need and as a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, we've actually completed the entire build now. We've actually um, made all of the details. And, uh, well, let me clean the area up a little bit and I'll show you what it looks like now that it's all done. So this is what Max and Ruby's house will look like once it has been 100% fully completed ladies and gentlemen hopefully you have managed to make this for yourself hopefully you've enjoyed making it and hopefully you're going to enjoy having it in your world as well if you did like this tutorial please do remember to hit that like button it really helps me and the channel out very very much if you're new around here please do consider subscribing and clicking the little bell next to the subscription button that'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box and if you want to make anything else by me check out the card system description below in the top of the comment section for more thank you so much for watching everybody i love you all very much and i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye